Welcome back to a unexpected episode of Gore Fortress. There was one aspect I sort of forgot about, and I figured I would go ahead and cover this in a video before I close out the series. I had actually recorded this sort of as it was happening, however, I accidentally left out the second half of the video's audio, and I'm not going to go back and try and do it this in post production. So, the strange mood sort of mechanic. Uh, what ends up happening is once per dwarf uh, they can get a an idea for something. Uh, dwarven babies do not get these ideas, however dwarven children can. Uh, of course adults can also get this idea. So uh, what will happen is the dwarf will uh, sort of be living their life as normal and get suddenly be inspired to do something. Uh, this inspiration is based off of their skill. Uh, if they have a particular skill they've been using a lot, uh, such as this dwarf up here, uh, glass making is their highest uh, skill. So in Dwarf Therapist, uh, just looking over this, uh, it says that this is the highest moodable skill. So if this dwarf were to get an idea, it would be in the glass making skill. However, what has happened here is this farmer has gotten a, an idea. Uh, however, their only skills are wood burning and cheese making. So what that will do is sort of dump the dwarf into a uh, random thought sort of pile. And from that, uh, they're going to pick one of these uh, crafting skills. Uh, it tends to be uh, leatherworking, woodcra uh, woodcrafting, stonecrafting, bone carving, uh, as the kind of common uh, skills that end up getting chosen. But going over to Dwarf Fortress, uh, what will happen is they will head for a workshop. If you get a dwarf who has an idea, and they are just standing around, what it could actually what it means is that the uh, either they cannot path to the workshop that they're after, or the workshop that they're after is not yet built. If that happens, you're going to need to figure out which workshop they're after. Uh, basically, just have one of everything, and have a second dwarf assign a second dwarf with the skill and the Dwarf, the second dwarf will build the workshop. Uh, what this means is if you do not have a workshop, uh, or rather not having workshops does not remove that skill from the uh, strange mood pool. So that, well, you really just can't work around it. Anyway, after the dwarf uh, gets the workshop, they will claim it. Uh, this will kick out anyone who's currently working there for the workshop of any current orders. Uh, so make sure that you go back and after the mood has finished, uh, either for better or worse, uh, make sure to requeue any orders that have been canceled. After the workshop has been claimed, the dwarf will either stand around in the workshop and sort of indicate one way or another that they're after particular materials, or they will immediately head off to gather those materials. After they've collected the materials, then they will get to work on building whatever it is that they've got an idea for. Alternatively, if you're not opposed to doing so, you can go over to Dwarf Therapist, type in show mood, uh, all lowercase, two words, or sorry, one word, uh, that will tell you the name of the dwarf, or what sort of mood they're in. There are four different moods. Uh, one mood, I believe, involves the murder of another dwarf, which can potentially be devastating, uh, although that one is very, very rare. Uh, there is a second mood that does not result in uh, an experience gain, and then there is... There are two other moods that are a little bit different, mainly just in presentation. 
however, those um, three of the four moods do give experience. So uh, this shows the name of the dwarf, uh, the type of mood they're in, uh, which workshop that they're after, and then which skill they're going to gain. Uh, then this is sort of the status of what's already happened. They've already claimed a workshop, and they want the following items. Uh, there is a way to sort of encourage the use of uh, more or less valuable items. However, it's far beyond the scope of this sort of uh, fortress that I have set up now. Uh, the number of items ranges from one to, I currently have eight. Uh, I'm sure that it can go up higher. And each of these items will add more value to the finished product. And I, uh, items that they're after can be repeated. So uh, three rock boulders, uh, one raw green glass, uh, metal bars, any cut gem, any leather, uh, more raw green glass, more leather, and more metal bars. There is a, not really a bug or an exploit or anything, uh, but it's sort of a slight oversight. Uh, dwarves who are after a cloth material, there is plant fiber cloth, animal hair cloth, and silk. Uh, all three are considered to be cloth. Uh, when it comes to the dwarf indicating what they're after. Uh, however, they are only after a particular type of cloth. So that is one of the reasons I use Dwarf Therapist uh, to show the moods. It cuts down a, on a lot of the guesswork. And realistically, by this point, I've already got enough, um, enough materials to cover any strange moods. So anyway, that's the uh, strange mood uh, picked out, the workshop acquired materials gathered. They're going to be working at this for probably several weeks. Uh, these sort of things do take a while. And at this point, unless something happens and the building is destroyed, they're going to finish the mood with a positive outcome. So they'll get all sorts of happy thoughts for a very, very long time. Uh, it's enough to max out any of the happiness needs. So unless they're the sole survivor of a 200 dwarf fortress, uh, and they've had to watch the entire fortress slaughtered around them, and somehow survived, uh, they will max out their happiness. You'll gain an artifact of varying value and usefulness. Uh, artifacts range from the completely useless wooden figurines that you can't really trade away. Actually, you can't trade any artifacts, but they're completely useless. Uh, two things that you could otherwise not acquire. Uh, platinum you cannot use for weapons, however, you can acquire, uh, someone can make a platinum warhammer. Uh, at that point, you have a very valuable, very useful weapon. Uh, assign it to someone important and hope that they build up their training. Uh, at that point, it would be advisable to assign them to some slot in nobility so that they do not accidentally be assigned the hammerer position. Um, that tends to be, that tends to end up very badly. The other alternative, if for some reason they are unable to complete their idea, uh, they will either go on some sort of a homicidal rampage and begin to beat up other dwarves, uh, potentially killing a couple. Uh, the other side of that is they will simply become so depressed that they will end up killing themselves through some means. So that's pretty much the strange moon mechanic. Uh, there is some way of sort of encouraging researches for, or researching for the materials that you're after, but it it's kind of hard to pull off. So anyway, that's it for the uh, surprise. Uh, surprise thought episode or mood episode, or whatever. So, until next time, and next time we'll be covering the trading mechanic, uh, probably with the elves. So, until then, stay safe, and keep your doors happy.